like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard against him. And we are poised for the greatest revival, supernatural acceleration, not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Ghost. If you believe it, stand to your feet. Come on, church, and stand to your Jesus. feet, and we're going to worship the King of Kings. Come on, church, put your hands together. Something you can't explain 
of worship, we would like to welcome you to the front. If there is anything that you are trusting God for, there will be leaders and pastors in the front to pray with you. Step out in faith and let's see God move on your behalf. In Jesus' name. good and his mercy endures forever.
and start to believe you are sufficient for me. Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are Lord. You are more than able. You are more than able. You are more. You are more than able. You are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Oh, it's easy for you. Now I see all that I have. Hey, I've got my confidence back. I put my trust in the one still does miracles. You do miracles. You are more than able. 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 Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Can you imagine with all of the faith in the room what the Lord can do? What the Lord can do? It's gonna happen, but you said the way. Let's lift up our hands this morning. Come and declare it this morning. You're standing in an atmosphere of faith.
on, just take a moment. What is God able to do in your life this morning? Come on. Consider that for a moment. I've come a long way. I've seen how you work. There's so much goodness and grace. Much more than I deserve Cause I know who I am And I can't stay where I'm at We've come this far by faith And I just can't turn back Cause you're not done with me There's so much more to the story. Let's just lift up our hands as we pray this morning. Father, we come. We stand in agreement with that song this morning, Lord, that we believe in this room that you are more than able, Father. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what we ask, what we think, what we could ever imagine. Now, how wonderful and how great are your thoughts towards us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you only have good thoughts towards us, Lord. Thoughts we cannot number. Thoughts to do good to us. Thoughts to give us a hope and a future. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that whatever it is, you are able to do in our lives this morning. We receive that. We receive it by faith. We receive it with humility. Knowing that we don't receive it because we deserve it. We receive it because you are good. And so we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father for your favor. We thank you, Lord, this morning for your unconditional love. Father, I pray for people who might have entered this place this morning, low on faith, low in hope, Lord, I pray that you stir faith in them. I pray, Lord, this morning that hope will arise again in their hearts, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, we stand here this morning expectant of you. Anything is possible. Anything, Lord, is possible this morning for those who believe. And so we believe this morning that you are the God who is able. And for that we give you thanks. For that we give you all the glory, all the praise. Everyone who believes that God is able, come on, let's give him a shout of praise this morning. Amen. Come on, you give him a shout of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. Well, welcome to
welcome church this morning. I see, uh, let me not say what I want to say. Let's stick to the schedule. Just want to welcome everybody that's tuning in with us online on Facebook and YouTube. So glad you decided to join us. And then a special welcome to all our Paul 96.7 FM listeners. We're so glad you decided to join us this morning. And we pray wherever you're watching or listening from that the Word of God, the presence of God will manifest right there where you are. So come on, everyone in church this morning. Let's just welcome everyone with us. Amen. And then before you take your seat, just greet someone, welcome someone. Amen. these things, like with rugby, you never quite know what to expect, amen, and so I was like, yesterday, this church is going to be packed this morning, but I can see the rugby had a different effect on some people, amen, Lord Jesus, have mercy, I think the country took a collective sigh last night, amen, some of us have to go and see the cardiologist this week, I'm not quite sure if I can do another week of that, amen. It's been two weekends in a row, and now we have to go through it again. I mean, I honestly, I tell you, I was at some stage last night with like 15 minutes to go, hoping, listen, maybe we should just lose, amen, because I cannot do another week of this. Anyone with me? Amen. Any All Black supporters in the house this morning? Listen, come to me after the service. I've got a list. I really, I've got a list of wonderful churches you guys can go to. This church is only for Springbok supporters. Amen. Amen. What some nonsense is die? Screw for the All Blacks. Amen. Amen. Let me just not say anything. Amen. Amen. But we thank God for, uh, I think, um, what that team does for this nation is amazing. I think they inspire so much belief and so much hope. And, uh, and also that we really have an inspirational captain. Amen. He's not just a token captain. He really is an inspirational captain. And uh, I think that team does a lot more for this nation than we realize. And so we pray for them. And we trust that we will be on the right end of the result next week. Amen. 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 We've got this hissing thing here this morning. Is there a way we can switch that off? Ah, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're getting there with the church. Amen. So for those of you who haven't been here in a while, we've been busy with some upgrades, etc. And so I think we are a week away, amen, from being complete and uh, from finishing the work that we begun in the sanctuary, amen. So we give God praise and honor for that. I know Pitt and Paul and the crew have been working tirelessly, long shifts, long hours uh, to get things ready, to get things done. And uh, I think... Pete and Paul and the people working with them are also praying to God that this will be the last week, amen, so they can get pastor off their back, but uh, we give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for what we are able to do uh, in our church, amen. You ready for the word? The title of my message this morning is The Art of Wisdom, and that's something that seems to be in short supply in the world today, if you just follow the news and see what's happening all over the world in politics, in economy, etc. It seems to be that wisdom is in short supply and sadly, the same could be said for the church. Embracing spirituality and faith does not mean that wisdom goes out the back door, amen? We can roll around and fall on the ground and pray in tongues and jump up and down As much as we like, but if we lack wisdom, we're not going anywhere in life. And so as a charismatic 
Pentecostal church who believes in the gifts of the Spirit and speaking in tongues and being free in the presence of God. We celebrate and do all those things, but sadly, sometimes in the church, that is all we celebrate, and wisdom seems to be a thing that is almost not good. Amen? We require the wisdom of God to build the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? And so wisdom is important. Too often Christians and the church are associated with foolishness and stupidity that is brought upon us by those who lack wisdom, insight, and discernment. Our freedom and faith is not an excuse for absurdity. Amen. Do you, do you agree with me? Amen. <laughs> Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. Amen. Here's another one. Knowledge is knowing that a banana is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing you don't put it on a pizza. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching the truth here. Amen. Where are all my people that put banana on a pizza? Can you just raise, oh, Jesus. I'll give that same list of churches to you as well. <laughs> Amen. Pizza or pizza. Lord Jesus. No wonder the Italians are so grumpy. Amen. Not receiving an education is an injustice, but remaining uneducated is a choice. God opens doors for those who seek, knock, and ask. And the good news is wisdom can be acquired, pursued, and received because wisdom comes from God ultimately. James 1.5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. This morning in this place, you can be expectant of God for wisdom. You can require of God to give you wisdom for the circumstances you face, for the things that you need to do, for the life that you want to build. The Bible says clearly ask of God and He will give you wisdom. Not just wisdom, the Bible says He gives generously. Wisdom comes from the Greek word Sophia, which refers to skill, clarity, insight, and intelligence. It is the root word for the English words sophistication and philosophy. We need wisdom to build the life that God has called us to. It's not just going to happen by a prayer and by speaking in tongues. It requires wisdom. By wisdom, the Bible says, things are established. We need wisdom. To gain a better biblical understanding of what wisdom is, we need to look at it from an Old Testament perspective as well. It says in Psalm 111 verse 10, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey His commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise Him forever. The fear of the Lord is having awe before God, to be in awe of Him, to esteem Him highly, to understand that God is holy, that God is worthy. Fear of the Lord is to esteem the Lord for all He is, and then we will receive the wisdom from God. It's not being afraid of God. It is understanding who God is in His nature and celebrating that and coming in worship to Him for all He is. Proverbs 2 verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. Now wisdom in the Hebrew sense is similar to the Greek and means to be wise, to be skillful, or to have wit even. But from a cultural and a religious Hebrew perspective, it was clear to them that all wisdom comes from God. 
and that true wisdom is found in Him alone. I'm not saying don't read books. There's a lot of wisdom we can gain from things that people have already done that we are still trying to do in this life. You can gain wisdom from people. You can gain wisdom from books. But ultimately, we want God to guide us and lead us into places of wisdom so that we get the right information and the right knowledge. The spirit of truth is a spirit of wisdom. The Bible says God will lead us into all truth. You could say God will lead you in wisdom. The church, the early church was birthed in a time and place where Greek philosophers like Socrates and Plato and Aristotle had heavily influenced the Greco-Roman world and the society at large with their philosophies. They were super smart people. They were philosophers and thinkers who influenced the world and influenced society through their wisdom and their philosophies. Some of the church fathers and leaders of the early church of the day incorporated some of these aspects of these philosophies into Christian ethics and theology. One could say that Christianity was the religion of the church and philosophy was the religion of the Greco-Roman world. They were puffed up in their knowledge and their philosophies and their wisdom. But not all was bad. We shouldn't reject all philosophical viewpoints as some of them support our Christian beliefs and even confirms God's word. Some of them without knowing have even taken it from the word of God. They've just rearranged the words or put it in different phrases that give people more understanding as to what they're trying to convey with this philosophy. In actual fact, all of us here in this room, we live by philosophies that we believe is the basis for success and happiness in our lives. All of you this morning have philosophies about certain things in life. You believe if I conduct myself in this manner, if I do these things, if I run my household according to this philosophy, if I do my work according to this philosophy, this will lead to success and happiness. Everyone in this room has a philosophy or philosophies that they live by. All of you. They might be good, but they also might be bad. And these philosophies we've picked up over time, maybe through our upbringing, in our family homes, we picked it up through our education and our relationships, through things that we've pursued. We all have a philosophy about life. You know what it's like when you go visit someone and you see in a certain area of their life, in their household, they conduct themselves completely differently to you. And for you, it might even be strange. For you, it might even be wrong because you have a different philosophy about doing things. But that is their philosophy. And somehow they've decided that this is how I'm going to live my life. This is how I'm going to lead my family. This is how I'm going to raise my kids according to certain philosophies. Amen. Now, the word philosophy to you might just mean, well, that's an area that I associate with philosophers. No, you have a philosophy. Amen. Your life is a reflection of your personal philosophy, which you have gathered, gathered from various sources over time. Your life is a reflection of your philosophies. Your relationships are a reflection of the philosophy that you believe about friendships and relationships. Amen. Are, are you listening? Is that, is, it, is that why you're so, so silent? Are you, are you philosophizing? Is that a word? Well, I've got the mic. I can make up words. Amen. We're philosophizing this morning. <laughs> but your philosophy about life are your guiding principles that dictate your behavior in any given situation. Now, interesting, philosophy in the Greek means the love of wisdom. 
For us as children of God, our philosophy should be rooted and built upon the wisdom and the Word of God. The love of God will result in a life of wisdom. Because if you love God, you inherently love wisdom and invite it into your life. Proverbs 4, verse 5 and 6, it says, Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom. To love God is to love wisdom. To love wisdom is to pursue God. Proverbs 4 verse 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. The key to your next breakthrough is getting wisdom and understanding. We have declared this year the year of supernatural acceleration. You can accelerate things in your life by pursuing and getting wisdom and understanding about the area of your life that you believe needs acceleration. Of course, sometimes we make these declarations and we get all excited. Woo! It's the year of supernatural acceleration. And now we sit and wait around for God to accelerate things. God is willing. God is able. But are we in the process of pursuing wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment that will help things accelerate in our life? Wisdom is the principal thing. Amen. Your success and happiness in life will ultimately be determined by how much wisdom you get. Knowledge and information are not the same as wisdom. They are parts of wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom, knowledge and information applied leads to wisdom. The only way for you as a Christian to gain wisdom is if you take this word of God, you take God about, you take God at his word and you start reading it, and what you start reading starts stirring in you, and now you have the faith to apply this, to obey this, and that is how you gain wisdom. Amen? I can lay my hands on you and pray for you to receive wisdom, and God might, if it's His will, deposit a word of wisdom in you. But 99% of the wisdom you require will be found in the Word of God. Amen? Now, obviously, there's not a section in this book to figure out complicated IT problems. Amen? Amen? Because it's a shocking that I actually have to clarify that. Amen? But by studying this, God will lead you to places and people that can help you in solving that problem or that issue. Amen? The Word of God is the wisdom of God. James 3 verse 17, it says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled, then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteous hypocrisy and self-serving guile. Now that is a mouthful. But if ever you want to know if you are a person who walks in the wisdom of God, then James 3.17 is a very good scripture to measure yourself by. Because it tells us what wisdom looks like in the life of someone that is wise. It says it's pure. It says it is peace loving. It says that it's gentle and reasonable. Full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without hypocrisy you just sense when you sit with certain people I'm in the company of someone who's wise because what they radiate and your experience in sharing and talking with them I have found the most wisest people talk very little 
They're very good listeners because they understand through listening, I can better understand and better discern and now I can give a better answer. Amen. That's something you need to learn as a human being. Because some of us don't listen to understand, we listen to respond. I'll say it again. Some of us don't listen to understand, we listen to respond. What's my comeback going to be? Okay, okay, okay. Jy het nou dit gesê. Okay, okay. Wacht nou vir my oomblik. Amen. But measure yourself by James 3.17. Proverbs 3 verse 7, it says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. Oftentimes, what some people consider to be wisdom is actually their own pride. Ever encounter people like that? You can't tell them anything. They know everything. Amen. They portray themselves to be wise, but it's actually pride. What we think sometimes is wisdom can be rooted in our ego, our self-importance, and our overconfidence. The the way to avoid becoming prideful is to be dependent on the wisdom of God. The end of me as a pastor, as a leader, will be the day that I proclaim no one can tell me anything. Amen. Amen. Because you maybe achieve certain things in life and you attain a certain level of success and you think to yourself, well, I've done, I've done, I've done great, I've done well. And now you just assume to have arrived. And you reject all counsel and wisdom. And you become prideful. And what does the Bible say about pride? Pride comes before the fall. Amen. Proverbs 20 verse 18, it says, Plans succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise advice. You can avoid the greatest mistakes in your life by seeking wise counsel. Amen. Wise counsel. Niemand, niemand kan my niks vertel nie. Weet jy, hoekom kan niemand jou niks vertel nie? Want jy wil nie hoor wat hulle te sê het nie. Want wat hulle vir jou gaan sê, stem nie saam met wat jy wil heen nie. En wat jy wil doen nie. Amen. I ended up engaged to the wrong person because I wouldn't listen. I've told you the story. That person, she wasn't a bad person. She was just not right for me. Ek het die ring gekoop, die rok gekoop, die venue betaal, just to hear God clearly three months before the time say, this is not for you. Amen. Amen. Rejecting wisdom cost me. Cost me money. Because I paid the venue. Get buy a good betal. She actually married someone else in the dress I bought. It says, what? Yeah. Yeah. So if you come to me for relationship advice or you ask me about that person, maybe just believe that I know a little bit about relationship because God made me wait a little bit longer. Amen. But wisdom. And sometimes God surrounds you with wise friends who know you, who can see that. Nee, nice, nie for you, nie. 
what you're doing with that person. It's one of the key areas in our life that we need the most wisdom is with people and relationships. Amen? Because that's the area of your life where you will experience the greatest fulfillment, but also the greatest hurts. People can hurt and disappoint. But you can avoid your greatest mistakes in life by seeking wise counsel. I'm surrounded by wise people who I receive counsel from. Amen. This church doesn't have a board just on paper. It has a board that I have discussion with, that I bounce thoughts and ideas off. Because I'm foolish to think I know it all. I don't see all the angles. I'm not aware of my blind spots. Wisdom. Amen. And so it's my greatest joy as a pastor to provide people with wise counsel. I love it. I love talking to people. I love sitting with people who come to me for advice. Because that is part of my calling. God has equipped me and gifted me for that. You're going to have a hard time if you don't like doing that. Amen. So it's not because I'm more clever. It's not because I'm more educated. It's just God has gifted me for the call. It's a part of my greatest joy is sitting with people. And helping and advising. I get great joy and fulfillment from helping people and guiding them in their life decisions and their circumstances and choices. This is why you have pastors and leaders and spiritual oversight. When's the last time you spoke to someone that knows more than you? When's the last time you allowed someone to mentor you? Amen? Let me do something on the fly. I'm spots at this um, but whoever's here, come stand here. Let's go. Bongani, Slee, you guys come stand here. Stand some here on stage. Joanne and Lisa, come stand here. Let's go. Just wanna show you something. Stand here, people. That he may can see the more yellow like. Amen. Where's Jock and Michelle? Where's Jock and Michelle? Is Yale Iso? Come stand here, Yale Iso. Tia, I was. I didn't say Iso. Where's Talita? Come stand here, Langsjo man. Is Barry and Mary here? Oh, is there any? Any? Just, just. So. These are some of the people that God has gifted this church with that you can come to for wisdom and advice. Don't just assume everything happens through the pastor. Amen. John and Leanne, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. The church is not in them. Amen. And so... If you never, as a member of this church, ever go to any one of them and ask them for wisdom and advice in certain things and aspects and area of life, you are unwise. Amen. And so, I mean, you have Jacques and Michelle there who lead the intercessory team in the church that walk with God, that can discern things, that can pray with you and walk with you. Yet you are and Lisa da. Amen. A great couple who can counsel you in marriage. Johan can counsel you and help you in your career and business decision. He has a master's degree. I don't know what he is. Amen. He is a master. Amen. You have... Bogani and Slee, a dynamic couple. If ever you want to know how to start a business, because every time I speak to Bongani, he started another business. Amen. But they're a dynamic young couple that you can come to and ask questions and wisdom. Amen. Yet, these sofa and Tia, I don't need to go to the back anymore. 
they have an understanding about certain things and have been through things that some of you still have to go through. Amen. They're on the verge, it should have been Thursday, of becoming grandparents. But I can bait fast, I can't wait. Amen. Gaan hy vir die, waar is Hein en Carla? Jylle is oekie, kom staan hier so. Jy sê, ek het vergeet van jylle. Kom staan jylle oekie so. Hein het nou baie meer weisheid. They've also just recently had a baby. Come on, let's give them a hand. Amen. Hein's leading a large company. Influential. His wife's got her own business. Then you've got John and Leanne. Dynamic people that you as young people need to understand there's wisdom in the house that I can pursue. And I've just decided we're going we're gonna to start a mentorship ministry where you can gain from these people. Amen. Because it's not just me. Amen. And so God gifts the church with elders and leaders who carry certain things. You have Justin and Talita. I often, often brag about Justin because he won't brag about himself. But he is a professor of professors. He oversees other professors. Amen. He's one of the wisest people I know. So before I have coffee with him, I just study up on what's happening and what's like, yes, okay. Just kidding. And his wife, successful doctor. There's wisdom in the house. Amen. That can bless you. That can help you. Don't just, oh, I believe Pastor Sin. Yeah, you can't make sin. It's not unavailable. Nie. But God surrounds me with people of wisdom who I've often gone to and asked, what do you think? What do you think we should do? Amen. If I can do that, surely you should be doing that as well. Amen. Come on, let's give them a hand this morning. Amen. Thank you, guys. We are blessed with amazing leaders, amazing elders in this church that can help you. Amen. They can help you in your studies, in your career, in your marriage, in your business, in your relationships, in your family. And if I didn't call you up here, please, when I need my brief, I just, that's, that's a belief. If you want to be part of the team, come and speak to me. I am going to set up a mentorship team. Amen. Because we have a responsibility to equip you um, in life, in the skills and the wisdom of life. And so when it comes to wisdom, there are so many principles that I can share. In actual fact, I probably, I'll probably need a 12-week series to cover the most important aspects of wisdom. But you need wisdom in life. But there's an area of wisdom I want us to close off with where we all need to grow and develop. Many people over the years believe that Solomon asked God for wisdom. But that's only half the truth. It says in 1 Kings 3, it says, give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else had ever or ever will have. In actual fact, God continues to say, I will also give you what you did not ask for, which is wealth and riches and prosperity and possessions. But Solomon as a young man in his 20s was thrust into a position of leadership that would have been daunting to say the least. It would have, it's like you that's maybe on a, Managing level, senior manager level, now you thrust into the position of being a CEO of a company. What do you know of making those kinds of decisions on that level? And that is the position that Solomon was thrust into. Even though his father was King David and he was the rightful heir to the throne, 
he would have been overwhelmed by the prospect of leading a nation of God's people. It is a massive responsibility. And so when the Lord appeared to him in a dream, he said to Solomon, ask anything of me and I will do it for you. And by Solomon's answer, we can conclude that he was already a young man of wisdom beyond his years because he asked the right question. Amen. That's a lesson for some of you. Some of you are asking the wrong questions. Just me saying that is confusing you. I know. But you have to pray about that and think about that. Because Solomon asked the right question. God not only gave him what he asked for, he gave him what he didn't ask for. He asked God to give him wisdom and discernment with people so he could lead a nation, so he could impact people's lives, so he could influence people. Solomon was the wisest and wealthiest man to have ever lived because Solomon understood and could discern people. Why is this important to note? Because there's nothing of significance that happens in your life without people. Amen. Nothing of significance happens in your life without people. You can avoid people as much as you want, but at some stage you're going to have to deal with a human being, even if you are in IT. Amen. All my IT people said, they're not going to say amen. But your next breakthrough, your next promotion, your next increase, your next opportunity, your next contract, your next deal, your next blessing is going to come through another person. Amen. God might be the one orchestrating your breakthrough and your blessing, but He uses wise people to exact His plans. Amen. You are the key to someone else's breakthrough. Did you know that? You are the key to someone else's blessing. And just as God uses you to exact that in other people's lives, God will use other people to exact that in your life. People, what you need to get is wisdom to deal with people, to work with people, to help people, to reach people, to discern people, to understand people. People. Luke 2 52 it says and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men Jesus the son of God favor with God and with people if Jesus needed favor to fulfill his ministry favor with people how much more don't you need favor understanding, discernment, wisdom regarding people. And that sadly is something I find very often lacking in Christians. We somehow develop in a certain area of life, but then we stop developing in other areas. And we, reuse, we, we, we lose relevance. We have an inability to connect with people. <coughs> Amen. Yes, by all means, be spiritual. Be holy. Be righteous. Be good. But even Paul said, don't be so spiritual that you are no earthly good. Don't be so worldly That people figure out, trying to figure out, are you a Christian or not? Amen. You have to be a well-rounded individual who knows God, loves God. You can pray in the tongues with the best of them. You can study your Bible. But you also have an understanding 
about how people and the world works because that's what's going to make you effective. If you've never read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, read it. It will help you. The book was written in 1937. There's one part in the book where they speak to a man in, 19, in the 1930s or 1920s somewhere. And he received a contract that was worth a million dollars a year. Now, a million dollars a year back in the 1920s, 1930s is by a geld. But he was employed in an in, into an industry that he had no understanding of. In actual fact, they asked him, this business magnate, why do you employ this person who knows nothing about the steel industry. And his words to them was, I did not employ him for what he knows about steel. I employed him for what he knows about people. Amen. God can get you into positions of breakthrough and favor because of what you understand and know about people. You might be unqualified on your CV, but something about you will say to them, I need this person in my organization. Because a wise person understands that people are your greatest resource in any company. Amen. If you want to release the favor of God in your life and win the favor of people, increase in wisdom. Your value in life increases in proportion to the value you bring to others through your wisdom. Are you someone that someone can go to and walk away thinking, wow, that blessed me, that helped me. Be that kind of person. 1 Kings 4, it says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Israelite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Also, he spoke of trees from the cedar tree of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. He spoke also of animals, of birds, of creeping things, and of fish, and men of all nations from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And Solomon attracted the attention of the rulers of the world. Without marketing, without a social media campaign or a public relations office, rulers from all over the world brought gifts and treasures of all kinds just to receive Solomon's wisdom. <coughs> the wisest thing you can do is get wisdom to deal with people. That is how Solomon amassed his wealth. As people would just come bearing gifts. In actual fact, they would send ships ahead of time filled with precious stones and all kinds of treasures and things that they would just send to Solomon just for a word of wisdom. That's why Solomon says in the Proverbs, by wisdom. It's more precious than silver and gold. These people understood it. They literally bought wisdom from Solomon. He had too much gold and silver and precious stones and metals to know what to do with because he pursued wisdom. Not just wisdom to be clever and wise, but wisdom to help and lead people. If you would just pursue God and pursue wisdom with the intention of impacting people, there is no limit to what God can do in your life because God cares about people. 
said to the staff this week, I said, with bosses there, I said, don't say to me, happy bosses day. I don't want to be a boss. Amen. I want to be a leader. Some people flourish in being a boss. Amen. There's a difference between a boss and a leader. A boss orders. A leader is there in the trenches with you, showing you the way. Proverbs 11.30 in closing. The fruit of the consistently righteous is a tree of life. And he who, he who is wise captures and wins souls for God. He gathers them for eternity. This re, the reason this church exists ultimately is to worship God and to reach people. That is the wisest thing we can do is worship God, reach people. Worship God, love people. Worship God, pursue people. Worship God, help people. Worship God, seek people. That's the wisest thing we can do is you are a worshiper of God, but you have a heart for people. We exist to win people to Christ. You can only effectively win people through the wisdom of God. Amen. Sometimes you struggle with people because there's a total disconnect. Amen. There's ways to engage, to reach, to have conversation. Amen. Wise ways that the church would do well to adhere to. 1 Corinthians 9, 19, it says, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. That should be our heartbeat. We are a servant of all. We are wise people, so we can win more people. Finally, Paul understood the wisdom of winning over people. Because he knew that's what Jesus died for. 1 Corinthians 9, 22, it says, To the weak, I became as the weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I may, may by all means, in any and every way, save some by leading them to faith in Jesus Christ. Wisdom will show you what people need in order for them to find Christ. Amen. Here's one of the most valuable things I've learned in pursuing wisdom regarding people. And if you understand this and apply this, it will help you. But it is said and it is proven that people are most comfortable speaking to a version of themselves. And so if you in a conversation, in a meeting with someone can discern and pick up who this person is and you can come in on their frequency as if it's like speaking into a mirror for them, they will open up to you and you'll be able to effectively help them, guide them, lead them, counsel them. Wisdom. In it, means it would not for my unfathers, but they guess. Ne? Ja. Van jylle harde kwaste wat die binnen sit. Dis nou maar net hoe ek is. Ok, ons verstaan. But, there is wisdom in dealing with people who Jesus died for. And you'll be more effective. You'll live a far happier life if you can learn how to work with people. They will frustrate you. They will anger you. They will drain you. But if you have wisdom, you'll have less of those effects. I mean, I understand as a pastor, I've had some days that I don't have a word to say to my wife. Because people have just pulled out everything out of me. 
drained me. You will have those days. But through wisdom, those days can be better. Amen. Did you receive something this morning? Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. As we close off this service. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving around, no one looking around right now. I'm asking that everybody just remain in their seat. This is the most important part of the service right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, just you and God. God brought you here to speak to you. The wisest thing you can do right now is to hear what He has to say to you. God speaks to everyone. Maybe you're in this room this morning because someone invited you to church. Someone was wise enough to reach out to you. And here you stand this morning. And what you heard preached this morning was the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whomsoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you this morning. That's why He brought you here. That's why you heard this message. God is not a God of coincidence. He is a God of purpose. It has been preordained for you to be here, to be in this audience, to hear this message. Because God wants to reach you. God wants to save you. God wants to help you. God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. God wants to give you life life more abundantly and I pray this morning you will receive it you might sense a stirring in your heart this morning your heart's racing in your chest you're wondering what's happening to me that's the Holy Spirit nudging you imploring you encouraging you to choose Christ the Bible says there's no other name by which men and women are saved only the name of Jesus there's not many ways to God there is one way to God you cannot save yourself. You cannot be saved through your good works. We are only saved by Jesus Christ. There's one name under heaven through which all people are saved. There's one name we call upon that gives us salvation. That is the name Jesus. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Saved from what? Well, saved from hell, which is a real place. Saved from a life without purpose and meaning. God saves you to give you life. God saves you so you can inherit everything He has for you, so that you can gain a home in heaven. But you must be born again. Jesus said to the wealthy man, Nicodemus, who came to Him in the middle of the night for fear of what people might think because he was an important man. But Jesus wasn't focused on his importance. He was focused on his salvation. And he said to this man, you must be born again. And so I say to you this morning, you must be born again. Don't leave this building without choosing Jesus because you don't know. This life is not promised to us. This might be the only opportunity you get. Don't let it slip you by choose Jesus this morning <coughs> maybe you stand here this morning you're like that prodigal you left your father's house you wasted your life on worldly living you realize this morning you're in a spiritual pigsty you're not where you're supposed to be but the Bible says in that story that the prodigal son came to his senses in the pigsty and he said, I must return to my father's house where I am loved, where I am accepted, where I'm received. The Bible says he ran to his father's home and what he found was his father waiting on the road for him. God does not stand in judgment against you this morning. God is not going to expose you this morning. God loves you this morning. And if that's you, I wanna pray with you as well. So all over this room, you're saying this morning, Pastor, I realize I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I realize this morning I need to make right with God. 
then it will be my greatest privilege to pray with you. Maybe you're standing here this morning, you're saying, I am that prodigal. I need to return to my father's house. Then I'd love to include you in that prayer. So all over this place, if that's you, you're saying, Pastor, please pray with me. Then right there where you stand, just lift up your hand high and say, that's me. Look, you aren't working, say this act. But summit may. Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand. Lift your hand high above your head. Thank you, I see your hand. Lift it high so I can see. Thank you, I see your hands. One last time before I pray for people. You're saying, Pastor, I'm ready. It's time. It's time I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. While every head is bowed, every eye closed, and you say, that's me. Just lift your hand high and say, that's me, Pastor. Look, you aren't working. Say, that's ek, Pastor. But some it may as a belief. Last time all for it for me is a bit. You have it for open. For the year. You have God nodig. You have Jesus nodig. Look, you aren't working. Put your scores. Say, that's ek. But some it may, Pastor, as a belief. Amen. Look up at me. All of those of you, you can put your hand down. If you raised your hand, maybe you wanted to, but you didn't. It's not too late to receive this prayer. Take your Bible, your personal belongings, your cell phone, your handbag, whatever you brought to church with you this morning. Leave your seat right now. Come and stand in the front with us as we pray and agree with you this morning. Come on, turn to someone. Turn to someone. Sal, walk with you. Come, leave your seat. to what the Holy Spirit is doing in you right now. Amen. So we're going to sing this song through one more time. If you raise your hand, maybe you didn't, but you wanted to. I please, I ask you, I implore you. Leave your seat. Come and stand in the front. And let me pray and agree with you. Amen. Come on. Let's cheer them on this morning. Come. Turn to your friend. Turn to your neighbor. Tell walk with you. Come, leave your seat. responding to me. I'm just a messenger. What you heard was the gospel and what you're responding to is what God is offering through Jesus, which is salvation. So in the moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation. And in that moment, as you pray, God's going to give you a new heart, a new beginning, the abundant life that He promises you will be yours. And God's going to do a work in you. You're going to be a brand new person. Amen. Put your hand on your heart. Raise your other hand to heaven. Pray this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you died on a cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose again on the third day to give me life. This morning, I receive that life. I thank you. 
that all my sins that I confess to you now are forgiven. I thank you that I'm washed in your blood, that I'm whiter than snow, that from today I am a new creation. I have a new beginning. I have a new heart. And I am a child of God. And here is my life. Use me for your glory. Holy Spirit, come and fill me this morning. Lead me, guide me in all truth and all wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Are you in the front? We just want to spend a moment with you to pray with you. Give you a Bible if you don't have a Bible. Give you something to read. If you could do me a favor, turn to your right, my left. Just follow Hein over there. We've got a special place prepared for you. Come on. Come on, let's cheer them on this morning. Come on, come on, come on, clap for them. Heaven is rejoicing over every soul saved this morning. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. Amen and amen. Well, I trust you receive that word. Amen. Amen. You can take your seat as we call up Pastor Sean to deal with the offering and announcements this morning. Amen. Amen, church. Let's put our hands together for a great word this morning. We are blessed with the best. Ushers, we may get ready for the offering. And Pastor Mark, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, just once again, it's absolutely amazing just to be part of this house, to be part of this vision and uh, to see where we were and where we are now, but where we are going. And that is the great thing. So it's a privilege for me just to just to share. Thank you, Justin. It's a privilege uh, just to share this morning with you. It's uh, a revelation that I caught at Dream Week, and I got back with that revelation, and uh, God just reminded me that uh, we need to represent heaven and church is the embassy of heaven. So that is our representative is heaven. So the church is the embassy on earth. And how do we represent to heaven? Do we represent it in excellence? Do we represent it in, in, in the way that we see heaven? Do we represent it in truth? Do we represent it by faith? Do we represent it in prayer? Do we represent it in giving? And um, if you look at any embassy all over the world, they represent their country with excellence wherever they are. Their, their grounds, their, their staff, everything from their bathrooms to their foyer, everything is an excellent because they represent their country. And that is our church as well. And that's the mindset we need to have as church members, as churchgoers, as servants, as, as leaders that this is our house, and this is a house of excellence. So, 1 Chronicles 28 verse 10. So take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as His sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Let's be strong and complete this. Let's be that house of excellence. We're already halfway there, but there's so much more. There's so much more that we need to do and that we can do. So we were there, we are here now, but we're going there. And uh, while we were praying this week in uh, the junior youth facility, while they were busy renovating here, we saw the vision. And uh, I don't know if you know the seven-year vision that, uh, that Pastor Mark set out for our church, but I just got reminded that we are going to be the most influential church in this area. And that is what we're going to do. And... Uh, not, not that the other churches is not influential, but we are called to stand out. We are called to represent Christ in our way. So let's be a house of excellence and let's build this temple in Jesus' name. So just quickly, we're going to pray over our seed. I thank you, Father. We can just gather here this morning, Father, going to pray over your temple, Father, as you chose us, Father God, to be strong, Father, and let let's do it father i pray for you called us father god to do the work father i pray father god you will just touch our hearts father god you will speak to us father god we'll release a seed father god by faith father god even if it's a 10 rand father a thousand rand a hundred thousand father it's not about the mount father it's about the principle father i pray lord we will see father 
your favor that's coming through, Father. Favor, Father, with contractors, Father God. Favor, Father God, with everything, Father God. But Father, we all stay faithful towards this vision, Father God. You've set out for us to complete this building in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Ashes, we may take up the offering. Then uh, just some quick announcements. It's uh, Bible school. Who have registered for Bible school yet? Who've registered? Oi, oi, oi. All right. So this is the last quarter for Bible school. So please, there's still time to register. Uh, make it a priority. It's really a great session. Pastor Mark is going to present the last, the last, skadila, uh, salabas. Uh, so he's going to represent that. So please make make an effort to say, listen, I want to equip myself, a school of discipleship. So you learn so much more. So you can still sign up for Bible school at the info table. So it's starting this Tuesday, the 24th, and then. We've got NMO, so I know a lot of members asked about NMO, so that's our new membership orientation. So that is where you can become a member of the church. That is where we explain our vision, mission, mandate. We go through a gym track cycle where we speak about uh, John 3, 16 training, how to win your world effectively, and also spiritual gifts where you can fit into the body of Christ in your servanthood. So that is also the 13th of November. And then baby dedication has been moved to 10th of December, the 10th of December. So please make note of that. There is a lot of people that uh, said they can't make the 12th. So we moved it and postponed it on towards the 10th. So if you want to dedicate your baby, please let's uh, just give your details to the staff and Mikala. All right, then. It's an absolute privilege and honor, Pastor Mark, and I just ask you to come to the front. And um, it's uh, Pastor Mark's birthday tomorrow, and uh, we are our house of honor. And uh, it's, uh, this is our leader. He's been sent to us, and we are super grateful just for you, Pastor. Thank you for everything. Thank you for sharing your heart. And uh, it's getting quite emotional because it's a... Uh, He's an amazing person, and I would just help myself and my wife and as a church, and just in general, thank you for who you are, Pastor, and uh, it's truly, it's truly just a pastor, and this is a summarize, this is a summarize, Pastor Mark, he's a person who faces their own challenges and doubts, but inspires us with the unwavering faith. He's a spiritual leader, he's a mentor, he's a friend, and he's a pillar of strength. So thank you so much, Pastor, for everything. Thank you that you what you do for us as a church. We honor you. We can just stand to our feet and just give an honoring clap to Pastor Mark for his birthday that's coming up. And uh, this is just a small token from the church, Pastor, to you. And uh, then we also got something special for you. So you may take your seat. And uh, let's turn our attentions to the screen. All right, media. Hi, Pastor Mark. On behalf of Kerry and myself, we'd like to say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Mark. 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 Thank you for being a good friend, a good pastor, a good person and for leading us with so much courage and determination. Happy birthday, Pastor Mark. I just want to wish you a very happy birthday for tomorrow. Van my and the Kopman family. I just want to wish you the best year ahead in Jesus' name. Amen! Amen! Happy birthday, Mark! This is lief for you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for a wonderful year. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Thank you so much to each and every one of you. It is um, the greatest honor, the greatest blessing, the greatest privilege to build this church with you. And um, I often say to the pastors, my colleagues, I said, the greatest blessing of this church is I'm surrounded by people who make me look better than I really am. And uh, that's the blessing of this church. And uh, I don't take it for granted. I am tremendously humbled and honored that you receive me in the way that you do. And uh, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do, the sacrifices you make. And that is the greatest gift is the people that God has sent to this church. And I honor you all for your endeavors, your efforts, every bit of effort and sacrifice that you make to make this the church that makes me look better than I really am. I honor you, I love you, I treasure you, and I pray whatever you have sent my way, that God will multiply that back in your life. Amen. So uh, come, let's stand to our feet as we close off the service. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for this church, for these people. I thank you, Lord, that we get to do this, that we get to be chosen and used by you for your glory. Father, I pray for every person in this room, every person that might not be here, every person that's watching and listening this morning, I pray, Lord, that they will experience your supernatural acceleration in their life, your blessing, your favor, your goodness, your mercy, that it will manifest in every aspect of their life, Lord. And so I thank you, Lord, this morning for our church. I thank you, Lord, that the best is yet to come that you are still to do greater things and that we are expectant this year even for next year as it will be the year of overflow, Lord. I pray that we will position ourselves before you in expectation for the God of overflow to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what we could think, ask, or imagine. Lord, I pray may your hand of favor, your hand of blessing, your hand of protection rest upon everyone here today. And I thank you, Father, Thank you for them, and I pray for them that you will bless them. Good health, long life, and everything their hearts desire. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Have some fellowship, some coffee, and we'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock, for the live link with Pastor Art. Amen.